Thank you. <laughs> Amen. John said, please don't embarrass New Jersey. So I'm going to do my best. Thank you for your encouragement, John. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, it's a, such an honor to be here today. Um, I'm just so grateful for my tribe. This is my tribe. And um, thank you for Chuck and, and the whole glory of Zion team, for Bill Suddeth and Sylvie and uh, Chris Hayward, John and Cheryl and Gannett, everybody that's here. Uh, Doris is not here right now, but Linda and uh, Robert Heidler, I just really appreciate everybody here. So my message today is I'm speaking on how to overcome fear. And so this is something that I have never done because I've always been afraid of technology. So pray for me. I'm using a PowerPoint today, which is a miracle. So John, pray for me. <laughs> Help me, Lord. <laughs> so anyway... Um, one of the things I want to say about this new era, uh, which I'm, I'm really excited about, is just the impartation of strength that God has given the body of Christ. And um, in this decade of the mouth, you know, we all have, a lot of us have big mouths. Now, God wants us to use it the right way. And so today, we're going to shift a lot of things that we've been saying. And so in this decade of the mouth, one of the things that the Lord has been speaking to me for over a year is that we are, he has been in, in preparing us, he's been consecrating us for a while now because no flesh can glory in his presence, amen? And he wants to get all the junk out of us. And so this is one, something that the Lord said about this season and why this meeting is so important. I love the title, Freedom to Release Your Voice. Fear is one of the things that, that really try to hold my voice back. I battled with a lot of fear, panic attacks, and, um, and I'm happy to say that God came, Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. Amen? So we're going to operate in the supernatural unlike anything we have ever seen. God is calling us back to true holiness. A true fear of the Lord is coming back over the body of Christ. And, the, and, and there's going to be an aggressive display of faith. You can't walk in faith if you're battling fear. And so greater boldness, increased authority in the enemy. I just want you to know he's not going to sit idle behind and just say, isn't that lovely? They all want to get stronger in me. So we're going to talk about that and how to learn to fight this thing. Amen. So I, the Lord said to me, he said, I am raising up my dread champions and they are going to be my people that are the remnant that's rising up that's going to take uh, dominion of kingdom and you and walk in our kingdom authority and un unlike anything we ever have but it's a choice it doesn't just happen and so God is speaking to the remnant that's saying I am determined to change I want breakthrough in my life I don't want to live as a wimpy faithless Christian I want to be who God has called me to be and so that was my thing fear is a demonic force that captures your voice and, and, and it, it doesn't want you to, first of all, speak freedom over your own life, your family's life, your city's life, your, your nation's life. It just wants you to sit behind with masking tape over your mouth where you don't say a thing. You don't decree a thing. You don't stand for anything. But the Lord is saying to us today, there is an unlocking that's taken place where you are no longer going to be bound with any kind of fear. Because we are made in God's image and we have the spirit of God within us. So that means we can do all that God asks us to do. And it's not without a fight. You know, it took me a while and I'm still at that place where I have to be really careful that I don't allow fear to grip me. All right, so do you have the first? Oh, there it is. Okay, so fear is a demonic force that has captured our voice. And fear, let me see if I can do this, is designed to torment us. How many of you ever had a tormenting spirit just speak to you and doesn't shut up? But you see, the enemy has a voice too. And we have to speak to that thing and tell it where to go. So, the enemy desires to take away and silence our voice through fear and intimidation. And you know what? He's after our authority. He's terrified for us as the body of Christ to know who we are and to walk in our authority. He's terrified of that. 
And a lot of us back down when we're in the midst. You know, it's great here that we can shout hallelujah to the scriptures and all, but it's when we're in that place, when we're in that fight, where are you at? Whose voice is louder? Who are you listening to? And, and so that's where we have to really develop our, 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 our walk with the Lord in, in, in a greater way in meditating on the word. And uh, so we can't allow fear to rule in our lives. Now, how do I do this thing here? Hold on a second. Okay, hold on. Help Lord. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Thanks, John. All right. Yes. See, I'm not going to let fear hold me back. No, and success means that there's always, oh, thank you. there's already oh, someone on your path that can help you. I know, I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I'm sweating a little, but don't worry about it. I'm good. All right. So fear perverts our vision. Okay. It perverts our vision and it contradicts, it always contradicts the word of God. You know, the bottom line is, like, when you're going through something with fear, your flesh, your soul is telling you one thing. And that's, we, we live in that soulish realm. But the bottom line is, as we know, we have to have the, allow the, the word of God to have final say. Now, now I'm going to teach you a little bit about the spirit of fear. But we have to be determined to say no to this thing. When I was struggling with this, I had panic attacks. It was awful. I... I I just didn't know who to go to at the time. There weren't a lot of churches. Well, there still aren't a lot of churches teaching about deliverance. But, but at the time, I didn't know who to go to. And, and I was meditating on the word. And, and honestly, I didn't even think it worked. But as I kept doing it and kept doing it and meditating on it, taking authority over the spirit, I was getting freer and freer and freer. And we have a church back in New Jersey. And I tell you, we minister to so many people that are bound by phobias, anxiety, fear, worry. I can, we can just get done preaching an amazing message. The glory of God shows up, and then they're telling me about their fears afterwards. See, we have to shift our mindsets. We can't stay in that place. And then the Lord really spoke to me, and he said, this is something that he said we all have to address. It's fear of money, fear of being rejected, fear of failure, fear of success. You know, just fear is all over. And so we have to understand that God's got our back. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Right? And so, you know, we've been saying that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We have the dunamis power of God. We have that spirit of might, that kratos power within us to overthrow the works of the enemy. And we have to believe that. It's not, yeah, but. You know, well, yeah, but you don't know my situation. Yeah, but then you don't know our God. You know, because he's El Gibor. He's the mighty champion. There's no equal to our God. And that's what we have to go back and remember. You have to know his character. So... Um, fear causes barrenness in our lives. You don't, d d you don't produce. You stagnate. You stay behind. It paralyzes us. It causes an invisible prison. You don't take risks. You always play it safe. I used to work it where I didn't take any risk. I was always playing it safe because I didn't want to have this, this shame come on me and humiliation because of making a mistake. Because, you know, a lot of us, we have that perfectionism thing that you have to break out of. God never called us to be perfect. Uh, perfect. He called us to be mature. So it perverts our vision. It's an unclean, antichrist spirit because it comes against the word of God. And so fear tells you you're not loved and tells you you're not accepted. It steals your faith. It keeps you from trusting God. What does the Bible say? When I come back, what will I find here on earth? What? Faith. So what does it come after? Our faith. What's the thing that the Bible says it's impossible to please God without our faith? So we have to check, where, Lord, where am I in this? Am I trusting you? Fear keeps you from, in a, in a, you know, in a, just, uh, fear is a distressing emotion. This is from the dictionary. Aroused by impending pain or danger. Now, we have our natural emotion of anger, of course, you know, that, that alerts us. But then most of it's illogical. And it's a destructive emotion. And I'll tell you something. You want to stay bound. You want to stay in anger. Or, or just, it, it, you're, you go around the mountain and you don't seem to come off. And you make excuses upon excuses and you're not trusting God. And then what happens is we blame God for our problems. And the Lord's saying, listen, I came to set the captives free. 
And he says, and I'm giving you tools to learn how to walk in freedom. So I was so bound, <laughs> I really was. And I thought, if I can get free, if they're telling me that I don't have to live this life the way I'm living, I'm gonna do what it takes. And I really did, I devoured the word. And, and so I, I still want everybody to devour the word because it's the revelation of the truth of the word that sets you free. Then, you know, you hear from the Lord, you get directions from God, but it's not that difficult is what I'm saying. Jesus made everything really simple. So I want to read to you a scripture out of Psalm 78 in, uh, from the Passion. It says, take, for example, the sons of Ephraim. Though they were all equipped warriors, each with weapons, when the battles began, they retreated and ran away in fear. When the battle began, they retreated and ran away in fear. Wow. Does this ever happen to any of you or me? They didn't really believe the promises of God. They refused to trust him and move forward in faith. Oh, Lord. They forgot his wonderful works and the miracles of the past, even their exodus from Egypt, the epic miracle of his might. They forgot the glories of his power at the place of the passing over. How many times they rebelled in the desert days, how they grieved him with their grumblings. Again and again, they limited God, preventing him from blessing them, preventing him from blessing them. Continually, they turned back from him and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They forgot his love, his great love, how he took them by his hand, and with redemption's kiss, he delivered them from their enemies. I mean, the Lord would have me read that, and he said, stop limiting me. Stop limiting me. Take the cap off. If you can figure out how you're going to move forward, it's not God. He dreams really big. And you have to get before the Lord to hear the strategies of the Lord. And that's the thing that the Lord just had to keep working on me and still keep working on me because that fear thing, that what you're familiar with, tries to grab hold of you. And so I, I meditate on this one a lot. I said, Lord, I am not limiting you any longer. Actually, I think you should just pray. Just say, Lord, forgive me for limiting you, for allowing fear to be a voice that's louder than faith. Amen. And then verse 43, it says, they disregarded all the epic signs and marveled. They saw, I mean, they saw when they escaped from Egypt's bondage, they forgot the judgments and the plagues that set them free. So that's something that you have to pause and say law and meditate on. Are you meditating? I mean, are you let, uh, letting the, the Lord limit you? Because it's our choice. We have a choice. Either I'm going to go backwards or I'm moving forward, and I'm moving forward. I am moving forward. I am not allowing fear to hold me back. That's why even when I was contemplating using this computer, I'm like, no, I don't know how to do it. And, and I thought, too stinking bad. I am, I am going to use this computer, and I'm going to be really good at it. So, in Jesus' name. Right, John? <laughs> okay. I have a lot of other things I have to break through, but right now, one thing at a time. All right. So we have man some, what are some of the manifestations of fear? I'm sure you all know them, but I just thought I'd put them up there. This is just some that I thought of. Anxiety, dread, distress, worry, all cause our self-talk to affect our emotions, right? What's your self-talk like? What are you constantly saying about yourself? Ungodly beliefs are a breeding ground for fear, right? Where we, we, even though we know we come to church eight times a week, we hear the scriptures, but when you're in a situation, what has final say? The word or what you think? Yeah. So that, that's what's really important here. So we have irrational thinking. We have a ne negative outlook on things. So we know the scripture in 1 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and of sound mind or a disciplined mind. So I looked up the words, uh, the definition, fear, the Greek word is delia, and it means fearfulness or dread. He's saying, I didn't give you that. But he says, but I gave you power, and that's dunamis, power, ability, force, strength, violence, work, miracle, might, virtue, mighty work, power for performing miracles. 
So you have to meditate on it. He didn't say you're a little wimpy Christian and you know what? It's your problem. Don't bother me. He's saying, listen, you have the power of God in you. Now you have a choice to develop it or you have a choice to back down and let your behind get kicked. So then, then it says here, for we have fear, power, we have sound mind. Listen to this. This is so good. And the, the Greek word is sophronio, something like that, which pictures a mind that has been delivered, rescued, revived, salvaged, and protected, and is now safe and secure. That's what that word means. Now, Rick Renner wrote uh, in one of his, that book, uh, the Jules book, I forgot what it's called. But um, on this scripture, it says here, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. He has given you a mind that has been delivered, rescued, revived, salvaged, protected, and brought into a place of safety and security so it is no longer affected by illogical, illogical, unfounded, and absurd thoughts. Isn't that good? That's our mind has been delivered. It's rescued. He's saying, listen, you speak to that thing. You speak to that spirit. You don't, tell, you don't let it tell you what to do. We have to fan that flame in, in, in 1 Timothy um, 4. Well, actually, 1 Timothy, I don't have it on the, on the computer. In 1 Timothy 4.14 4, in the Passion, it says, Don't minimize the powerful gift that operates in your life. Don't minimize who you are. I want you to see yourself. We're going to talk a little bit about imagination, but I want to, you to see yourself as a warrior, as a mighty warrior. You have to know who you are in Christ. And that, that he loves you with an everlasting love, and he put his DNA in us. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. And that we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. And we can't allow the limitations of our thought to hold us back. So he says here, don't minimize that powerful gift. It was imparted to you. Listen, I had fear imparted to me. My mother was always afraid. And, you know, I mean, she was tough. She lived through the war. But, you know, same with all of us. I mean, we grew up in her city. So you had to learn to fight and act tough, even though you weren't really tough because you were really afraid. But, but then this fear thing, no matter what we did, what are you doing? Oh, my God. I, I would take a deep breath. And she said, oh, my God, it's your kidneys. I said, Mom, I'm taking a deep breath. I don't have kidney problems. But she says, no, don't tell me you have a kidney problem. This is my mother, you know. So, you know, there was always fear in the house, uh, you know, always talking about all the negative stuff. I had to come out of agreement with that. So you have the spirit realm, but you also have just habitual things that you do and that you're used to, right? So uh, 1 Timothy 4.14 says, don't neglect this gift. We have to fan it. We have to allow the fire of God to burn. Um, first, uh, 2 Timothy 1.6, it says, I'm writing to encourage you to fan uh, into a flame. No, hold on. Let me start over. In the passion. I'm writing to encourage you to fan into flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you. We have to stir that fire up on our hearts. We have to stir it up. You can't be passionless. We are to be passionate for Jesus. So Leviticus 6.13 says, The fire shall be burning continually on the altar, and it shall not be allowed to go out. Now, I don't think I have any of this on the handout. Let me just say this really quick. In 1 Kings 18, 30 and 31, in the Amplified, um, when Elisha was uh, dealing with Jezebel and the prophets of Baal, you know, he said, how long will you falter between these two opinions, right? And so, all right, they're, they're mocking. He's mocking them, and, you know, all this stuff is going on, and... Before he went to call the fire down, he said to the people, come and let's repair, let's rebuild this altar. And I'll read it to you out of verse 30. It says, Elisha said to all the people, come near to me. And the people approached him, and he repaired and rebuilt the old altar of the Lord that had been torn down by Jezebel. Now, that word repair there means rapha. It's, it's healing. We have, to he we have to get healing in our hearts. We have to allow the, the, the disappointments and the discouragements or whatever it is, the unforgiveness to be healed. We have to rebuild our, our altar time, our intimate time with the Lord in this sea. I'm telling it like never before. We've always had to do it, but we have to do it. And so it says, then Elijah took 12 stones. What's 12? Governmental. There's a new kingdom alignment as we're getting into that deep place with the Lord to hear strategies for the alignment for what's ahead. And he said, in accordance with the number of the tribes of Jacob. And then what happened was he then called down the fire. But then what happened after that, and this is what, how fear comes in, 
This is an amazing thing. Kills the 450 prophets of Baal. And then what happens in 1 King 9, 19, 1 through 5 in the message, Ahab, like a little baby, reported to Jezebel everything that Elijah had done, including the massacre of the prophets. Jezebel immediately sent a messenger to Elisha with her threat. Now, that demonic representative is what comes after us. When we're taking a bold stand for something, when we're, we're, not, we're not straddling the fence, right? We're not wavering. We are standing for God. The Bible says when you've done all the stand, you stand. And then you stand and you stand. And that actually means to stand on the covenant promises of God. You stand and you don't back down. But then there's a messenger that's sent to you to try to bring you down. But that's what you have to be aware of because the Bible says no, you have, we have to know the devices of the enemy, right? We also have to know the way he operates. And we know that he's going to come. He's a liar. The Bible says he's a thief. How does it go? Uh, the thief doesn't come but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come to give you that abundant life. He's a thief. So he's going to try to come and steal that, that victory that you had, to make you look foolish, to say it wasn't really God. Or, but we have to be on guard. Now, God came and ministered to Elisha, but then they, you know, they had gotten Jehu and the other guy to you know, take out Jezebel. But, but the thing is, we have to be aware of that. Don't be surprised when you get that that tries to come after you. These messengers are no, no lightweight thing. I mean, but greater is he that's in us. See, if you recognize that, wait a second. I'm not receiving that. You intercept it. You know, like Wonder Woman, she would do all her, you know, she would intercept the word. You know, that's what we can do. We intercept it. Okay, we're good? All right. So, I think the next hand, all right. So, in Joshua 1, are you there? Okay. So, listen to this. Now, Joshua, they, these, they were all ready to cross over. into. It was a new era. Moses was dead. Now, they're getting ready to cross over. And this is the instruction that God gave them before they were crossing over. Of course, they had to sanctify themselves and do all that. But before he even said to do that, this is what he said. In Joshua 1, in the New Living Translation, No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was, was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors and I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be very careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the left or to the right. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. So do you think the Lord knows that that's something that we battle? Fear and discouragement? He's saying, listen, I want you to be bold. I want you to be courageous. So if he wants us to be that way, then we need to do our due diligence in learning what to do. And we need to, to get in spiritual shape. So uh, in the Amplified... I, I'm just like, because it said intimidated here. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed or intimidated, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So let's look at some of the definitions here. Strong is shazaz. I don't know how to say it. But it means to become strong, strengthened, courageous, to conquer, and to become obstinate. So it means it's, the Lord's saying, listen, you can do this. I don't want to hear that you're weak or, you know, we've always been timid or we have to back down. That's not what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He wants you to understand you can be strong. Cur cur courage means to be brave and to be secure, to be determined. Today, I want you to leave this place with everything that everyone's saying, to be determined to make that shift. Only you can do it. Listen, there is some impartation, and you're going to receive impartation today. But we all have to make a decision that I'm not backing down, that I'm not going backwards. I'm moving forward, and you better get out of my way because I have the spirit of the living God living within me. See, we have to make that decision. Get out of your mindset. You smack yourself if you start talking weak. Don't do it. Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do this. I had to say that. I had scripture posted all over the place because this fear thing, it was like you, you had, you know, du we're double-minded. That's what it means. But I felt as though I had a disease and I, that I was uh, some mental issues that I had. I get in trouble if I say some of these things, so I'm being careful. 
Um, so, I, you know, I, I just would, I, one minute I'm, I'm firm and I'm strong, and the next minute this fear would grip me that was overwhelming, that you can't do it. Sit down. Be quiet. Shut your mouth. Don't you dare go and do this. Don't you try to get a new job. Don't you try to excel in anything. Don't you dare go to school and get a degree. It was constant. This ever happened to anybody? It says, be determined. And I thought, you know what? I am done with this. We had to get to a point where I'm done with being bullied. I'm done with the enemy trying to take me out. You have to say, no, I'm going to walk in my inheritance. I'm going to do what God has called me to do because that's what he's after, your destiny. He's saying, you're not fulfilling your destiny. Well, you have to say, oh, I am filling my de destiny. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. So we have to observe. So that word is shamar. And it means to guard, to observe, to keep watch, to protect, to hedge around about. We have to, you know, guard our walk with God with a bloody sword. We have to guard our walk. We can't let anyone influence us or intimidate us because that's how the enemy gets us. That spirit of fear tried to take out Elisha after he just did this amazing, had this amazing victory. Look at how fast that thing came after him. But see, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So don't be afraid. We get the point. Don't be terrified or oppressed or harassed. Don't be dismayed to be shattered, to be confused or beaten down. If you're beaten down and confused, that's not of God. That's the enemy coming and afflicting you, right? So then to meditate means to meditate, to speak, but it means to imagine. See, there are vain imaginations, but we have godly imaginations. And the Holy Spirit is the one who speaks in through to us. Who, who, you know, he wants you to see yourself as that champion. He wants you to see yourself as that, that overcomer, that successful person, that, that one that has all their bills paid, that wealthy person, the one that sees family restoration. You have to see it. Isn't it easy? If I say apple, can you see the apple? right? If I say, oh my God, there was a car accident. Can you see the car accident? Right? And you can also picture maybe someone getting killed or some type of devastation. Well, our minds are incredibly powerful. He's saying, listen, I want you not only to meditate on the word, I want you to imagine it. I want you to see me interacting. I want you to see yourself laying hands on people, casting out devils. I want you to see yourself speaking life, prophesying. I want you to see yourself decreeing healing. I want you to see yourself decreeing shift over your region. See, we have to do this. We ha what are you thinking? What are you meditating on? 2 Corinthians 10, in the Passion, it says, For although we live in a natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipula manipulation to achieve our aims. Indeed, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God. And we break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defense or defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that one, that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. Isn't that good? So this is what we have to do. And so, you know, part of, what, you know, when I was uh, really struggling with the panic attacks, I had to really, I mean, I took, I would take authority over it. I would lay hand. At the time, I didn't have anybody speaking deliverance over me. And, and so God meets us where we're at. And I'm grateful as I move forward, I was able to get prayer. But I'm, see, a lot of times, and, and, and hear what I'm saying, a lot of times we put an emphasis that someone else has to do it for us. We have to do it. Now, we need each other, don't get me wrong, but I'm the prophet of my own life. And so I have to prophesy victory. I have to prophesy deliverance. I have to prophesy breakthrough. I don't, I mean, I, I love it when others do it, but I'm prophesying for who I am in Christ. The enemy is not going to speak over who I am in Christ, right? We have to get that, that, that lion-like attitude where we're not going to back down with this. And so... God does not want us to allow the enemy dictate our destiny because when we're in fear or really battling any other kind of issues, demonic issues, the enemy says, listen, I have an assignment and I have an appointment for you. 
and I'm going to dictate and I'm going to whisper lies that are familiar to you how and why and how and when and how you're going to move forward if you move forward. But you know what? There's a Psalm, I mean, I'm sorry, in Isaiah 52, it's talking about the, 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 um, uh, the he's, he's talking about the captive woman of Zion getting free. And it, and it said, uh, Zion is a free church. So why would he say a captive woman of Zion? And I always pictured it to have like a chain around your neck. And you know what? The, he'll give you a little rope. He'll give you like three things that he'll let you do. And then the moment you're starting to walk that forward, he pulls you back. Right? You're getting a little head, you know, head start and he pulls you back. And the Lord's saying, enough of that. We're ending that today. No more of the enemy yanking us by the chain and pulling us back. I saw a picture of um, this it, it was Islam. It was an Islam, a Muslim guy, and he, he had a chain, and he had three women behind him pulling them. I thought, this guy is out of his mind. But you know what? If you, that's no different than what the devil does to us when he's lying to us. It's no different. He's walking ahead of us. We're listening to him, and he has a chain. He's yanking us, and he's letting us know how far we're going to go. But see, that ends today because the Spirit of the Lord is here to set the captives free, and it's a choice. We have to be determined, I'm telling you. If you knew how bad I was with these panic attacks, you know, and it was, it was just pressing into the Lord. When, when I got saved, we were taught to get on our faces before the Lord and to pray and to wait on God. And God wants to bring us back to that. I'm not saying that you're not doing it, but, but a lot of times we don't. You know, I have a church, remember that. <laughs> I minister a lot to people. So the Bible says in Jude 3, I don't have it on the... Um, computer. It says, Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about common salvation, I was compelled to write you urgently, appealing that you fight strenuously for the defense of the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints, the faith that is the sum of Christian belief that was given verbally to believers. We have to fight for our faith. It doesn't just happen. We have to fight. The Lord said to me, Tricia, I am a, the avenger. I am coming to avenge my people. He said, I am coming to avenge my people. And I was in Luke, you know, it's in Luke chapter 18 where that widow, she kept, you know, going to the judge and she kept knocking on that door and knocking on that door and the unjust judge, he's like, oh my gosh, this woman's making me black and blue. I can't take her. And he said, well, how much more me being your God? He, and in that whole portion, if you read it, especially in the Amplified, he says, I'm going to avenge you. I'm going to avenge the loss. I'm going to avenge that which has been stolen from you. He's going to avenge the regrets many of you have been walking in. The Lord says that, that uh, he's going to avenge and turn the situation around. He says, but will I find faith? See, so in that period of time, that lady didn't give up. She's like, I'm getting what's mine. And you're not taking it from me. See, we have to get that attitude. It's not, what's the point? I've been waiting so long. Uh-uh. I'm taking what's mine. Because that's who we are. That's what the Lord says. When you've done all to stand, you stand. And you stand, and you stand, and you stand. Amen? Okay, we're good? All right. So fear can enter, and I think we know this, but in case you don't know it, through many different avenues. And these are just some. Fear can enter through sin, childhood trauma, generational curses, word curses, rebellion, intrusion, the enemy, he invades our thoughts, unforgiveness, stubbornness, negative thoughts, horror movies, um, you know, many different ways. And so right now, you have to check and see, are, what are you watching? I was on a plane coming here this morning, and this guy sitting next, uh, right across from me to the right was watching the most vile movie that I really did want to smack him. He, I thought, why in the world would they allow an evil movie like that on the plane, right? And I thought, I don't want my eye gate to see that movie. But anyway, so we have to watch what we're watching. And, and, and I did think about ministering to him, don't get me wrong. I mean, I did want to walk in love towards the guy, but he got off the plane first. But what are you watching? What are you, what, what are you allowing yourself to be... Um, you know, your friends, what are you, what, what are you, who are you hanging out with? What are you doing? These are all things that we have to check and identify because it brings you down. It brings you down. 
And so, again, the Lord says we have to consecrate ourselves in this season because no flesh will glory in his presence. The glory of the Lord is coming in a way that this is what he said to me, that we've not experienced. And remember Ananias and Sapphira, they didn't make it. So what, you know, he's a God of love, but he's also a God of justice and judgment. But, I, I, you know, again, this is what he keeps speaking to me. Get your life right. Get consecrated. Surrender to me. Be, con you know, surrendered and consecrated. Allow me to uh, uproot root systems. You know, we all have blind spots. You might want to ask somebody for a little ministry time to let them speak into your life. Because, you know, it's like having bad breath. You're the last one that knows. Everybody else knows. So you might as well just ask them if, uh, you know, if there's something in me that especially, well, maybe not your mate, he might be too truthful. But, but no, ask them, what, what is it that you see in me? Is there something there that you recognize that you can help me move forward? That's okay. Conflict resolution, feedback, it's good stuff. It's not there to hurt you. It's there to help you. So in 1 John 4, and he amplified, it says, There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But perfect, complete, full-grown love, full love drives out fear because fear involves expectation of divine punishment. So the one who is afraid of God's judgment is not perfected in love, has not grown in a sufficient understanding of God's love. That was the, this was the key thing that helped me get free, was, was learning the love of God. We hear it all the time, but we need to immerse ourselves in, in, in just allowing the Father to love us. I had absolutely no idea, uh, you know, years ago about the love of God. And where we used to attend church, there was this, uh, that we had um, a Romany um, section, a group of people that would come in. And this one guy, Frank, would always cry out, Daddy, Daddy, I love you. And I thought, oh, my Lord, if this guy doesn't shut up. And I wanted the ushers to get him and get him out of that church, you know. And I'm like, oh, my God. And the Lord said, you have the problem. It's not him. He has the relationship with me. And I thought, oh. And I thought, really? I, I had never heard of that. I never heard of the Father's love. I was okay with Jesus. I had a little issue with the Father. And I know a lot of us do. And so, but that was the thing that, you know, my dad was a great dad. He died very young, but he worked a lot of jobs, so I never saw him. So I interpreted it as someone who was disinterested. And so that's how when I would go before the Lord, I just felt like I was insignificant and he wasn't interested. So you see why that had to shift. And so it says perfect love. Well, I know it this way. Perfect love casts out all fear. But there's no fear in love. Dread does not exist. God's got our back. And we have to understand he loves us. What does Psalm say? Or, or uh, uh, Jeremiah or Lamentations. He loves us with an everlasting love. You know, we're created in his image. You know, and, and so he has, he, there's just so much that he does for us. And uh, so we have to really grab hold of that. If you are battling right now where you're, you're struggling with a lot of fear and you don't know the love of the Father, just right now, just ask him, Lord, I surrender myself to you. And, and, and help me in this place. Reveal your love to me. I mean, he's been doing it. It's just that you have to be able to receive that love. And that was the hardest thing for me, to receive it. So in Luke 4, in verse 6, it says, The devil said to him, All this authority I'll give to you in, your, in their glory. This is the devil speaking to Jesus. For this has been delivered to me, and I'll give it to whomever I wish. Well, guess what? God, Jesus Christ took it back. He got it from Adam and Eve, but I want you to see this. He said, all this authority I will give you. Well, we have all this authority now, and I'll read you some other scriptures. That word delivered means to surrender and yield up. That's what happened with Adam and Eve. And, and you know, I said this before, fear will cause you to surrender your authority. But um, in Matthew 10, in the Amplified, it says, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority and power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. That's us. He's given us power and authority, exousia power, dunamis power, delegated authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of sickness and disease. That's who we are. Proverbs 1 says in 33, it says, The one who always listens to me will live undisturbed in a heavenly place, free from fear, confident and courageous. You will rest unafraid and, sh and be sheltered from the storms of life. If you will listen to me, fear causes you to disobey. 
How many times has the Lord said something to you that you were afraid? Or what about ministering to someone? There's a harvest out there. What about going to minister to someone? Oh, what if they don't want to hear me? Well, what if they do? You know, it's, it's this thing. God is saying, listen to me. You will live in heavenly peace. The enemy's after our peace. He's Jehovah Shalom. We're going to crush the head of Satan under our feet. We have a supernatural peace that's an unfair advantage in the world. We get this peace free. And it comes to our relationship and a meditation with the Lord. Now listen to this. We know this. The voice, I love this. Psalm 29, the voice of the Lord is powerful. It's full of, uh, the Lord's voice is full of majesty. We are his voice. So when we're speaking, it's powerful. Don't underestimate who you are. This one I love. Now, you all were dancing up here. Listen to this. In Isaiah 30 in the, in the Passion, when, he stri when, his rod, when his rod strikes the Assyrians, they will be terror-stricken by the mighty voice of the Lord Yahweh. Every stroke of Yahweh's punishing rod will be to the sound of cymbals and strumming harps. God himself fights them in battle with dancing. Isn't that good? And it says the note there that he, uh, Brian Simmons had, it says this punishing rod will fall on the spiritual forces of darkness as we celebrate and dance in the victory of the risen Christ. See, that's the power of our dance. When we're dancing out and we're stepping out, listen, when you're sad and you choose to celebrate and dance, when you're battling with fear and you say, fear, you will not grip me, and I'm going to do that opposite of it, this is what happens. And we're decreeing the word of the Lord, and it says it's a mighty Mighty, mighty, powerful thing that we're doing, and it's a punishing rod beating the back of the enemy. You have to imagine that. Get that picture. So, oh Lord, you know, I'm going to worship you, but this is what's happening to my enemy. See, we have this ability. So what do we have to do to get free? I'm going to bring it to a close now. All right, first of all, you have to want it. Amen. I want freedom. Now, yeah. a lot of you may be free. I just want freedom. Amen. I want it. I, want, I don't want anything holding me back. I want freedom, Lord. And he says, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. I want freedom. You think he's going to answer that? Yes. Meditate on the word. Obey the word. Choose to accept God's love. You have to love yourself. That's another biggie. If you don't love yourself, you're going to have a problem I'm receiving the love of God. And so it's okay. It's not vain. We need to love ourselves because you can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself, right? Choose to forgive yourself. Ask God to uncover root issues. And we're going to pray. We're going to renounce some stuff. But renounce and break judgments, inner vows. Inner vows. Inner vows. You know, it's that determination. It's a, you said it. It's a determination set in your mind to protect you from pain. So we make these vows, I'll never let anybody get close to me. I'll never let anybody hurt me. I won't ever be afraid. I'm not going to put myself in a position to, be, um, uh, to, to have fear, right? So we have to renounce these vows. Just that, and if you don't remember them, just ask the Lord to show you what some of them would be. So that's really powerful because that keeps you bound. That keeps you locked in. And Jesus, you know, he's given us the tools for our freedom, so we're going to renounce and break word curses that we spoke over ourselves. And the enemy, like I said to you before, is fearful of us knowing our authority. Decree the word, the voice of the Lord shatters, and uh, we walk in a spirit of victory. Okay, so if you could stand, we're going, to, we're going to just pray and renounce, but we're also going to make a decree, okay? So this is just a sample prayer. That's all. You can pray it however you'd like, but... This is what I just wrote. So in, with this deliverance prayer, just say this. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name I, come against you, spirit of fear, I come against you, spirit of fear, and I bind your activity in my life. I declare I have repented of every known sin, and I submit myself to the Lord Jesus Christ. I totally surrender to you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, forgive me for doubt, unbelief, and fear. I also choose to forgive myself, and I release myself from any regret. And I choose to move forward. And I decree today that I am free in Jesus Christ. 
fear you have no control over me. You are bound and you are under my feet. In Jesus' name. Oh, I renounce, break, and come out of agreement of any word curses I have spoken over myself. I renounce any inner vows. And I confess that I am redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Out of the enemy's grip. Spirit of fear, I speak to you and command you to loose me now. You have no legal right. Now get out in Jesus' name. And I command you to go now. Now, I want you to read this this. Uh, powerful declaration because you're free. <laughs> you are free in Jesus. You are free in Jesus. Now, I want you to do this. Just blow it out. It's a spirit. Fear is a spirit. It is blow a spirit. it out. Yeah. Blow it out. Tell it you, you refuse for it to be in your body. Amen. Now, Father, we say these spirits. Now, open that door back there. Yeah. Tell these spirits to get, get out, out in Jesus' name of your atmosphere. Get out. Tell them to shut up. It's a up. spirit. Yes. Amen. And, and remember, you have to work at this thing. But now, this is my, our declaration because I couldn't leave it at that. Because we have to prophesy and decree who we are. So, I want you to say this. It's up there. It says, I, say this. I decree that God has commissioned me in this, you could say, in this new era... To be brave, courageous, victorious, and more than a conqueror. I am secure, confident, and centered in the unconditional love of my Heavenly Father. I know who I am in Christ, and I am led by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. I decree I am filled with the supernatural dunamis power of God. Standing on the promises of God, I am brave, battle-ready, well-equipped, heavily armed with spiritual weapons, a fierce and fearless warrior. I decree that I am a giant slayer and will not back down from any uncircumcised Philistine. I am faith-filled. Defeat and fear have no place in me, and I decree that fear is under my feet. I decree... I am strong in the Lord and in proper alignment in the body of Christ. I know my tribe and execute my part with dedication, determination, and discernment. I operate with the Issachar anointing, understanding times and seasons. I am a powerful prophetic voice, and when I decree a thing, it shall be established. My words and my worship are weaponized for his kingdom purposes, and I decree that in Christ I am unstoppable dread champion. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. 